Good evening and welcome to St. Agnes Church. Our opening, please join in our opening hymn number 463, From Ashes to the Living Font, number 463. For verse 3, we will sing Year B, Sundays 1 and 2. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, have done and what and I have failed to do. Be my be fault, my fault, be my, be fault, my, fault, be my be most grievous fault. fault. Therefore I ask, I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, Virgin, all the angels and saints, saints, and you, my, my brothers and sisters, and sisters to pray, pray for me to the Lord, the Lord our, God. our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. 
Do not lay your hand on the boy, he said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did and not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who indeed 
intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. I hope everyone is staying free from the various forms of the flu or cold or is um, over it by this time. If not, I guess you've had uh, maybe a little extra sacrifice uh, to offer uh, out of love to God. Uh, those uh, maybe who haven't gotten sick, uh, maybe still holding their breath, uh, washing their hands all the time, hoping to get uh, through the winter uh, relatively unscathed. Uh, spoke through to a family that uh, had gotten through it already and they were happy that they didn't have to be afraid to catch it anymore that, uh, well, at least that's, uh, you know, behind us, and uh, we all survived, so, um, you know, the, the future is looking up. I remember when I was uh, sick as a kid, so, um, I think pretty much each year I'd get something, and my dad would, uh, would see me looking uh, pretty bad and say that, I wish I could take that, uh, that cold or, or that flu from you. I'd rather have it uh, for myself and, and than to see you suffer. And um, this is something that we see uh, really in the scriptures today, that, uh, that suffering out of love, uh, that uh, the suffering love of a father, uh, but not one who is able to take uh, that suffering away from his uh, beloved son, uh, but one who is asked to, uh, to offer his son as, um, offer his son back to God. We see in, in the Old Testament that God sees a world that has forgotten him and has become sick in their sins. And it's not a sickness that will pass its course, um, go away after a certain number of days. And chicken soup and vitamin C won't do the trick. There's no inoculation that uh, really somebody needs to make atonement to God for the sins of the world and uh, to, to bring about that reconciliation, that restoration of God's grace that will come 
uh, by no other means than that atonement. Abraham is faithful to God and hears him ask for what is most precious to him, his beloved son, his only begotten one, whom he loves. The last thing that Abraham wants to do is to lose his beloved son, the one that, whom God has miraculously given to him in his old age and promised uh, to him that, uh, that he would receive uh, his descendants that would uh, be as numerous as the stars. But without uh, that perfect understanding of God's plans for him, Abraham does trust God. And in obedience, he brings his son up Mount Moriah as a sacrifice of atonement. We have only heard uh, really excerpts from Genesis 22, but in the, in the full text, it's worth uh, returning back to this, this passage, which is such a beautiful passage uh, prefiguring our Lord. In the unabridged Bible, we read, Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So Abraham's son carries the wood of the sacrifice up the mountain himself. When Isaac notices that they are not carrying any animal for the sacrifice, he asks his father then, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham says to him, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. Before Abraham can sacrifice his son to God, the angel of the Lord stops him and supplies that ram instead. Now, at this point, we might ask, why would God put Abraham to this kind of test in the first place? He could have tested his faith in some other way, for sure. God does not ask uh, for human sacrifice from anyone besides Abraham. And for each of us, our faith must be tested, but... Not, uh, not in this way in particular. But for the answer to that question, we must look at the Old Testament in light of the New. Why would God test Abraham in this way? Well, God is preparing the world for the sacrifice of his beloved son, his only begotten one. He did not, did not wish for the death of Isaac. Abraham's living faith, his consent to live out God's will for him no matter the cost, that was enough for God. Once he received that, uh, he was happy to, to give, offer that sacrifice and to substitute. That uh, we do indeed see God's uh, will fulfilled, uh, his words in, in the scriptures fulfilled, that uh, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Well, this is fulfilled in two ways, because in Hebrew, as in English, that, uh, that phrase is ambiguous, that God will provide himself the lamb of the burnt offering could mean one of two things, Namely, uh, that, uh, that he, would, he will be the, offer some animal uh, to sacrifice, uh, but the, less, the one that would probably not be thought of um, in, in the Old Testament is that God himself will be that sacrifice. God provides in these two ways, one in the immediate providing the ram that will take the place of Isaac, and the other only to be fulfilled in the fullness of time. Essentially, God is telling Abraham, take this ram for now. Don't let your son suffer for my sake. My son will be the one to suffer for you, for your salvation and the salvation of many. Abraham is the one to prefigure the gift of God's son who is sacrificed for the atonement of our sins. We can look at the parallels. Abraham is ready to offer his only begotten, his beloved son, uh, that the scriptures uh, says the, again and again as they walk up Mount Moriah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for us. And St. Paul says to the Romans about God the Father, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? Abraham's son Isaac carries the wood of the sacrifice up the mountain in order to be, in order to be sacrificed. Jesus will be the one to willingly take up the wood of the cross in order to be sacrificed for us. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a beautiful mosaic in the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Mecca Conception in Washington that um, you see the, the 15 uh, altars uh, behind the main altar, uh, which are the, the 15 first mysteries of the rosary, that um, in the, the sorrowful mystery of the carrying of the cross, you see both uh, the Old Testament prefiguring as Isaac uh, brings up the woods of his sacrifice that uh, sort of in, the, in that image happens to uh, form uh, in the image of a cross and in that, uh, that New Testament fulfillment of that scripture in which our Lord is walking up uh, Mount Calvary carrying his cross. 
We see how God proclaims to Abraham that because you acted as you did, I will bless you abundantly. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. So it is that obedience that, uh, that God commends and uh, loves, that, uh, that, that fullness of the gift uh, that, uh, that Abraham gives in that willingness to offer even his beloved son. In Jesus Christ, all nations shall be blessed because of his willing obedience to his Father's command. In a sense, then, the ram is a sign of what Jesus will do for us, since it was the one that actually sac was sacrificed upon Mount Moriah. The ram is caught by the thorns in the thicket or that thorn bush, so Christ, crowned with thorns, will be the substitute, the one to take Isaac's place so that all the nations may truly be blessed. If there's any doubt uh, left, we read in Second Chronicles that Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem upon Mount Moriah. So Jerusalem, uh, the, the temple is built on Mount Moriah. And in fact, Mount Moriah uh, encompasses uh, something of a range of mountains that includes uh, what uh, Mount Tabor, which is considered the historical place of the transfiguration we've heard in the gospel, as well as uh, that hill, just a, a short walk from, uh, from the temple on Jerusalem, which is Mount Calvary. So the mountain where the son of Abraham was to be sacrificed is the mountain on which Jesus will be sacrificed. God's test for Abraham then prepares us for the gift of God's beloved son offered up for our salvation. We turn back uh, to this same mountain on, uh, in the gospel, or this same mountain range, just a short distance uh, from uh, the, the mount on which the temple is built, Mount Tabor. And six days earlier, Peter had rebuked our Lord when he shared with his disciples how the Son of Man must be the one to suffer and to be killed in order to rise again. And he uh, also was, was afraid to, to share in that suffering that uh, Jesus, she, Jesus shared with his disciples that he would suffer. Jesus, in turn, uh, we know, corrected Peter, telling him that there is no resurrection, no freedom from the sickness of sin without that suffering and death first. Well, today we see uh, our Lord taking Peter, James, and John up that mountain to witness something truly special. Uh, these are the same three who will be with our Lord to see his passion at the Mount of Olives. But right now, Jesus wants them to see that glimpse of what it's all for. They see this prefiguration of the resurrection, of the glorification of our Lord. They see the resplendence, the power, and the glory of Jesus so that they will not despair when he is taken from them and he suffers. He encourages them as he shows them the light at the end of the tunnel. There may be suffering indeed, but it is uh, for a purpose. They themselves won't escape all suffering either. Instead, they will see how our Lord has willingly taken up on our, our sickness to bring us back to life. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church quotes St. Augustine, in, uh, in speaking of this, uh, this scene we've heard in the gospel, saying that Peter did not yet understand this when he wanted to remain with Christ there on the mountain. It was good that, uh, that he wanted to remain with Christ, on the, with Christ and with Elijah and Moses, and yet um, it was not the fullness of, of what our Lord uh, had intended for them. St. Augustine speaks in this sort of imaginary conversation to St. Peter about the transfiguration of the Lord, saying, it has been reserved for you, Peter, but for after death. For now, Jesus says, go down to toil on earth, to serve on earth, to be scorned and crucified on earth. He says, life goes down to be killed. Bread goes down to suffer hunger. The way goes down to be exhausted on his journey. The spring goes down to suffer thirst. And do you, Peter, do you refuse to suffer? Our goal this Lent, then, is to join our Lord in these days of Lent without uh, that fear of suffering. We shouldn't worry about missing out uh, through our willing self-denial, our, our loving sacrifices offered out of love for our Lord and for one another. Instead, ask how to know the joy of doing without, of taking up small sacrifices, of that, uh, that real suffering out of love. We want to give with a generosity of heart, which we see expressed in Abraham, and above all, in our Lord Jesus Christ. How then might we share in this generosity of heart? 
Well, for each of us, it will only come, especially through prayer and detachment, that fasting, prayer, and almsgiving that were exhorted from the beginning of Lent. St. Jose Maria uh, speaks to us of this, of this need for that detachment, saying, if you really want to be a penitential soul, both penitent and cheerful, you must above all stick to your daily periods of prayer, which should be intimate, generous, and not cut short. And you must make sure that those minutes of prayer are not done only when you feel the need, but at fixed times, whenever it is possible. Don't neglect these details. If you subject yourself totally to this daily worship of God, I can assure you that you will be always happy. Through our prayer, our detachment from the things that we do not need, and our almsgiving or our works of mercy, may God bless each of us to share in the generosity shown to us by Abraham and given to us in Jesus' willing sacrifice for our salvation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We should pour forth prayers at all times, dear brothers and sisters, but above all in these days of Lent, we ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and peace among nations, especially Ukraine and the Middle East, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, diplomatic, and intelligence services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Israeli hostages held by Hamas and all the innocent victims of war and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that during Lent, we will be renewed in faith through prayer, penance, and almsgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for the sacraments of initiation, 
and full entry into the church at Easter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the church and stopped practicing the faith, that the Holy Spirit will move them to reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon James Joseph, Gabriel Gaudet, Michael Gibbons, John Anthony Buono, and for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville, and Joanna Shaw, postulant for the Carmelites in Port Tobacco, Maryland, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, and for our deceased, especially Paul Nimi, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Lawrence Larson, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory song, number 881, How Good Lord to Be Here, number 881. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your 
Spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Leni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Osana in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life from the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
So a few announcements. Our poor box collection this weekend is for birthrights, the organization that helps mothers in need have their babies. All high schoolers are also challenged this Lent to join us on Friday morning for the 6.30 a.m. Mass, followed by breakfast afterwards. Give up the snooze button and give your morning to our Lord Jesus. Uh, also, on that note, all, uh, people of all ages are welcome after the 6.30 and the 9 o'clock uh, Friday Masses uh, to join in, in the cafe downstairs. This Friday, there will be a sung Latin Mass at 7.30 p.m. after Stations of the Cross. We need your help. We have 15 high schoolers attending work camp this summer, so please return your car raffle tickets as soon as possible. Last year, we, we received enough proceeds to cover the entire cost for our teens. Also, we are still in need of adult volunteers, so please um, contact me or uh, Katie Ho for, for more information. The Religious Education Office and Young Adults Ministry are sponsoring the Lenten Parish Mission Meals for the Poor. Uh, the goal is to raise $16,000 to pack 45,000 meals that will be shipped to Ukraine and the House of Mercy in Manassas. You may make your donation by donating money at the Friday Lenten soup suppers or directly. Please see the website for more details. Uh, sorry, second page. Also, please be generous in supporting the food drive for Madison County and the collection for, of baby items for the Women's Choice Crisis Pregnancy Center. Lastly, due to two uh, compressed vertebrae, Father Penizzato has to postpone his retreat on St. Francis de Sales. So please do keep him in your prayers and we'll keep you updated. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in our closing song, number 689, O God, our help in ages past, number 689.